What is up, you guys? In this video, you're going to learn how to solve plugin issues within FL Studio. And while no answer is the same, hopefully one of these will help you with any problem you might be having. Please smash that like button and subscribe. So very quickly, first things we're going to cover is some have you tried turning it off and back on again tech support type stuff. Before we get too deep, make sure your plugin is up to date. Even if it's not up to date, reinstallation can help fix any buggy files. And with that being said, the next thing on the list is have you tried reinstalling or updating FL Studio? And if you've been trying everything and you've already uninstalled and reinstalled FL Studio, just take note that what you want is quote unquote a clean installation. When you uninstall and reinstall FL Studio, if it is or was open, then this can lock files, which makes for not a clean install. So you'll want to make sure to avoid things like this. And for full instructions on how to do a complete clean reinstallation, I'll leave a link down below from ImageLine themselves, giving you step by step on how to do that. This will include instructions on manually deleting files and more. So we'll go through some other options, but if it comes down to it and you have to do that, don't skip that. Check it out. Next, ImageLine actually has a list of known plugins and with known plugin issues uh, for FL Studio along with solutions to those problems. I will link that down below. The page will look like this with a whole list here. And in this list, you can just control F to pull up your finder and you can either type in the name of a plugin, or you can try the name of an actual company or the actual company of your plugin because it's not always listed under a specific plugin name. Sometime it'll be listed by companies. So, common solution for spiking CPU, no sound, crashes, rendering quality issues, rendering synchronization issues when you bounce it, it's not synchronized, right? And loop playback issues. We're going to open the plugin in question and go to its wrapper settings. We're going to enter the troubleshooting tab and we can click use fixed buffer sizes. If we enable this feature, we have a drop down. So if we drop this down here, we have process maximum size buffers. And what this basically does is this has FL Studio decide how long this maximum size should be. And then it'll use that. Um, that's decided by FL Studio, and that's not going to be your actual buffer size in your settings. Um, it's, it's going to choose a max size, which is going to cause a great amount of latency. You can also use maximum buffer size from host, which basically is going to take the plugin and have the plugin communicate with FL Studio about that max buffer size. Some plugins can use this data and it'll better help them operate together. Uh, some plugins that'll be absolutely pointless, but only turn those on if flipping on used fixed buffer sizes uh, isn't enough to fix the problem. What this is going to do is it's going to give a fixated buffer size that is thought to be enough in order to stop the um, plugin from not having enough time to figure itself out. But you most likely won't need either of these. Uh, only use them if this doesn't work. What use fixed buffer size is going to do is basically FL Studio communicates with these plugins to tell them and I mean communicate with them um, what the buffer size is at that current point in time or what the buffer size is that's needed in order to do the amount of processing required. <clears throat> Some plugins, however, don't like this and they don't like this kind of communication that's going on and they instead need fixed buffer sizes instead of a variable buffer size. Setting this to fixed buffer size, I believe the manual said gives two milliseconds um, for the buffer size. So what a buffer is, is how long the computer's being given to finish a task, which is why there's latency. So if you set that to use fixed buffer size, it's going to say we got two milliseconds to do all this work, which means there's going to be two milliseconds before you click play to when you get the rendered back audio. And that stacks up and is what causes delays in FL Studio is all this stuff adding on to that working time. 
The next thing that might solve those issues is if we open this up and we go to our audio settings. We can go to our multi-threaded processing here. We can try and turn these off. Um, if they're off, you could try turning them on. We also have align tick lengths. You can try turning that off or on. And if the variation of any of this fixes the plugin, then you know on your plugin issues, um, you can leave these on, for example, and come here. I believe it's in here. It is not, so it's going to be in processing. Allow threaded processing. If it was the um, multi-threaded processing, that was the problem. If you turn this off, you can leave that on for everything else and just turn it off for the plugin in question and that'll fix your issues in that plugin, but still give you the advantage of multi-threaded processing for everything else. After you de-click that, you're going to want to uh, save the wrapper state. So you can click save. If you have auto save on, it should save it for you. So next time you open up this plugin, it should load the exact same wrapper settings. Um, this is true for everything except for the graphic user interface, uh, from my understanding. If you notice a plugin is causing a sluggish, slow, or glitchy playlist issues, you can come to Options, Audio Settings, and you can make sure the reset plugins uh, on Transport is unchecked. Um, this will, as you can read in the top left over here, give faster response when relocating. If you're having MIDI, automation, graphics user interface issues, and patch changing issues, you can come to the back of your plugin. Where are we at? And come to the settings section, and you can play with the settings in the graphics user interface or the automation interface. And I have a video where I actually go over all of these settings. If you want to figure out what all these are in depth, click the video above. And next things next, something that can more universally cause issues with plugins is if you have a 64-bit system, then you want to use 64-bit plugins. If you have a 32-bit system, use 32-bit plugins. If that ends up being the case, um, FL Studio, they actually have their bit bridge wrapper, which is supposed to bridge and help figure that out for you. And if that's not working, it's crashing, then you can report that plugin to them and they will put it on their list of things to take care of. And that just about covers everything that I know about for fixing plugin issues. Um, in summary, there's many great options in the back of the wrapper for your plugins that can actually help fix these issues. If you want to learn more about all those settings, Go to the video that I had previously talked about above. There's a couple options in your audio settings that can actually fix these issues as well. If you want to know more about audio settings, I have a video covering all of that in depth as well. And then you can try the good old classic uninstall reinstall method that you would probably hear from outsourced tech support over a phone call. However, note that with FL Studio, there's a difference between a clean reinstallation and a not clean reinstallation. For directions on a clean reinstallation, I've got the link down below. And anything else that isn't fixed by any of this, you should report it to FL Studio. That way they can put it on the list and try and take care of it. So if you liked this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate it. Subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio and adios.